Good evening. We welcome you to University Church and the Notre Dame Newman Centre for Faith and Reason as we celebrate Holy Thursday evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. Please stand for our opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather today, we begin our celebration of the Holy Triduum. We begin our celebration of those three days which transformed our existence, which brought us the fullness of redemption through the saving action of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to celebrate, let us pause and acknowledge our sins mindful always of God's infinite mercy. You heal the sick, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. <coughs> the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put onto two door posts and the linton of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall take it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in the honor of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honor. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Blessing of my 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> this is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from the table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, at the moment, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. 
he knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly, so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. I've had those days. Jesus got up from the table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. Today we celebrate Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. This morning, the diocese gathered in the pro-cathedral with the archbishop, the priest of the diocese, lay leaders, and lay faith from, from all the parishes of the diocese to celebrate the Chrism Mass. <coughs> At that Mass, the institution of the priesthood is commemorated, and the gathered priests renew their priestly commitments, commitments rooted in their baptismal promises, commitments that specify in a particular way their membership in the royal priesthood shared by all of us believers. This morning, the priests of the Archdiocese committed once again to conforming themselves to Christ and to carry out the sacred duties of their ordination. They promised to be faithful stewards of the Eucharist and teachers of the faith, modeling themselves on Jesus himself, both as head of the church and of a faith being a faithful shepherd. After the people pledged their support to pray for their priests and for the archbishop, that we may succeed in the work with which we have been entrusted. Throughout all of that, we heard reference to the essential nature of our priestly ministry, the zealous care of souls and the dutiful shepherding of the flock assigned to us. That moment finished, large urns of oil were brought forth from the people to be blessed and prayed over. These oils, blessed each year, are used in our sacred rites, the oil of catechumens to strengthen and heal candidates for baptism, the oil of the sick for the anointing and the healing of the sick, and sacred chrism perfume that the person who receives it will radiate the odor of sanctity, the smell of holiness. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, the bishop literally breathes on this oil during the ritual. This oil seals the confirmandi during confirmation and is placed on the priest's hands during ordination. Though most of you weren't there today, our ceremony here tonight builds on this morning's in a real and meaningful way. The community prayed over their priests and blessed their sacred ministry. Sacred oils, the tools of their trade, were blessed for purpose, uniting all ministry in the diocese as one, under the prayerful guidance of the Archbishop and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we now see a little of what that ministry looks like in practice. Jesus reminds us in the gospel that order in the church, leadership in the church, authority in the church, looks like servitude. It is self-abasement for a greater cause. It is the created life force of the universe and the redeemer of all creation, wrapping his waist with an apron and stooping to wash the dirty, dusty feet of his companions. Though perhaps because of sandals, feet were more present in the world at the time of Jesus than we have today. They were still not. 
a location of interpersonal interaction. Even then, one didn't regularly interact with the feet of another person, unless he or she was your master and you were their slave. Here Jesus turns the relationship expectations upside down, and the master washes the feet of his disciples, and they didn't want it. You shall never wash my feet, says Peter. You will not abase yourself in this way. I will not allow it. No. Dirty, stinking, bruised, callous, ugly. No, Lord. But Jesus says yes. Yes, this is what ministry looks like. This is discipleship. This is what being a follower of mine entails. Membership in the body of Christ, leadership in the body of Christ, brings no rank, no privilege, no exemption from the lowliest of tasks. To be baptized into Christ is to become a slave. All of us are called to serve. All of us are called to wash the feet of those who come before us. But it is not mere servitude. It is ministry. It is mission. It is having been nourished by the body and blood of Christ, made present, made real, each and every time we celebrate the Eucharist. It is allowing ourselves to become ever more holy that which we have consumed. We allow the presence of Christ to transfigure us into his living presence in our world. And the church, alive in us, spreads the gospel to every land, brings the light of Christ to the darkest reaches of our world. Many of us recoil at the thought of washing another person's foot. And we refuse to let someone touch our own. It is too intimate. We feel too vulnerable. But we are called to be vulnerable with Christ, to form a deeper intimacy with him. In prayer and through our interactions and with one another. In such moments, we encounter the essence of God. We encounter love. A mother wipes and hugs and kisses the feet of her infant child because they are tiny and cute and clean. But she also does so as an expression of her endless and limitless love. A husband wipes the face and body and feet of his infirmed wife with the care and intimacy of abiding lifelong love. These are the feet of the woman who kissed her baby's feet, the hands that fed him and the arms that held him in the night. Now his are the hands that cherish and caress and nurture. Such is the stuff of life. Such are the movements of the human heart. Such is the action of love in the world. And love is God. Holy Thursday, Holy Thursday is a festival of love. Let us enter ever more deeply into this banquet feast, this celebration of love, of the fullness of God's love for each and every one of us. Jesus. 
Let us now stand for the prayers of the faithful. On the night before his death, Jesus sat at table with his disciples. As we enact that sacred supper, we join with Christ and pray to the Father for all our needs. For the church on earth, that we may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those in positions of power and influence in the world, that they may enter into the spirit of Christ's sacrifice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those confronted by temptation, that they may be strengthened by Christ's example of loyalty to his Father. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For this parish community, that we may always reflect the Eucharistic love of Christ, stay strong in the strength we gain from him, and offer hope to family and friends in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our sake, <clears throat> sorry, that they may know the healing touch of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the dead, that the sacrifice of the Eucharist may bring them to eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we come before you and present our needs to you, humbled by the Eucharistic love and generosity of your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and who was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, with which we offer you firmly, firstly, for, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dermot, our Bishop. And all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the ever-glorious Virgin Mary of God, uh, very, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, 
Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flocks of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through the participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <laughs> 